Hi, it's Mr. Kane here, and we're about to get into some stuff about electricity. But we do need a reminder about the atom, because it plays a key role in electricity. And what is it about the atom that uh, helps electricity to, to happen? So we're going to look at uh, what is the atom actually made of. We need to remind ourselves of the bits inside the atom, the subatomic particles. So we know that they're made up of smaller bits, atoms. There's three kinds of bits that make up an atom. We've got electrons, protons, and neutrons, and we've got this sort of classic sort of diagram of what an, an atom looks like with the protons and neutrons in the nucleus and the electrons whirling around the outside of that in a cloud around the outside edge of it. And hopefully now you've started to make a connection between the electricity topic and the, the particular particle we're going to be looking at electrons. Electrons, electricity, there's a connection there. Now the model of the atom that we use is this one here, the Rutherford model of the atom. So there's Ernest Rutherford on our $100 note and his proposed model of the atom was that it pretty much everything was in the nucleus, was positively charged and negatively charged electrons were whirling around that in a cloud around the outside but basically most of the atom was empty space. And we have the proton, charge of positive, a mass of one unit. Neutrons got no charge, also an atomic mass of one unit. Electrons negatively charged and are so small that there's basically nothing to them. It's all part of the key things of electricity. You know, the positive charge, negative charge, electrons. So let's start looking now at what how it is we get electricity flowing and in particular from our metals. First of all though we'll just remind ourselves of this guy uh, Niels Bohr who took Rutherford's idea of the atom and refined it into his model where the electrons were whirling around the outside of the nucleus but in distinct orbits and places. So your electrons were orbiting around the nucleus but his idea was that they're in distinct orbits or shells, energy shells or orbits. Like there are planets around the sun, there are orbits around the nucleus. And each orbit could fit so many electrons into it. So we organized our um, atoms into uh, layers of electrons around the outside of it. And here's one, this is um, actually a calcium atom. So we've got 20 protons, 20 neutrons in the in nucleus. And because we've got 20 protons, they're positive. We know we're going to have 20 electrons because they're negative and the charges balance out in a standard, in a, in a typical sort of in its normal state um, atom. So we've got layers around our, our atom here. And in the outside layer, we've got one there and one there. We've got a couple of electrons in the outside shell, and that outside shell isn't full. And this is key to uh, what happens with electricity. It's all to do with how many electrons are in the outside shell and what the uh, atom wants to do with them. So, a happy atom is happy when its positive and negative charges balance. So, in that previous one, we had the calcium one there, which had the uh, positive protons balanced by the positive, the negative electrons, 20 of each, all happy. So the same number of positive charges in the nucleus, so same number of positives here in the nucleus as there are negatives around the outside. And it's also happy when the outside valence shell is full. So in this example here, this is the outside valence shell, this one around here, and it needs to be full. Now we know from uh, Atom's work that the first shell holds two and the next shell out can hold eight. So this one here is a long way off being full. It's only got one in it and this is where electricity comes into play. So there's a neon atom. It's got eight in its outside shell. It's happy. It's got positive and negatives balancing. It's got ten protons in the nucleus and it's got ten electrons around the outside. It's happy. Its outside valence shell is full. It's one of the happiest atoms you'll find. But not every atom can have both of these at the same time. 
So for example, this, this one up here, that's only got one in the outside here, this is the element number three, which is actually a lithium, and it's a very reactive metal because of it's only got one in the outside valence shell. It's very reactive. Because if it can't have both, it goes for a full outside shell. So lithium, in this example up, up here, it will react with something and get rid of this electron here. Here's sodium down here. Sodium has also only got one in the outside shell. It's in the same group on the table as um, lithium and it wants to get rid of that shell. It ends up being positively charged and this electron gets sent off somewhere. Often it's picked up by something else but in the case of the metals, metals are found <coughs> with one, two or only a few electrons in their their outer shell around here and they're quite keen to get rid of them so the electrons can actually are held very loosely and they can flow off places and we can create ourselves quite easily with metals and electric current so the structure of the atom and the reason that when metals only have a few electrons in the outside shell lead to uh, electricity happening so that's sort of a reminder of the structure of the uh, atom and how it leads to electricity as well. So uh, I hope that's been helpful and uh, thank you for watching.